Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the State of Investment, coming to you guys and girls live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Hollywood, Hawaii. Don't forget that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. As always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, but we're going to jump straight into it. So today's topic is be greedy when others are fearful, and be fearful when others are greedy. Torn by the greatest investor of all time, Mr. Warren Buffett. Now, the thing about that is, as we can see recently, we've seen some big lies in the market. You know, all these tariff talks, trade talks, all these other things are then kind of wreaking havoc on the market, right? So as the market starts to tank and dive, and I won't say tank and dive, you know, we haven't entered a fair market. And we've kind of gotten into correction territory. Correction territory is when you're 2,000 points down off of the high. We haven't even gotten to that yet. We're getting close. Uh, the high was like 26,500. And we're kind of looking at about 25,000 right now. But to me, this makes me look much up and say, man, I wish I had more cash to start taking advantage of correction. Who cares if we slide into recession? And you know the data tells you that the market will go up more than it will go down. Over the last six years, S&P 500 has seen over six uh, market declines and recessions, and we don't even see the pressure in 1926. But guess what? The market is always rebounding. So, and always rebounded higher than what it was. So let's say the market is all Dow Jones, it is all time high, 26,500, so around that range. And let's say if it does, Dive down to 20,000. Everybody's going to panic and wonder what's going on. The media is going to go crazy. People are going to start talking. People are going to see a portfolio slide. But I want to go back to a great lesson that I heard from Charlie Money himself. He said, Hey, if you can't take your portfolio sliding by 50%, then guess what? They um, invest into equities and stocks and stuff like that. It's not for you. And he said, You deserve the mediocre returns that you probably will get by not investing and taking advantage into stock. So the thing about it is, even though the market may dial down to 20,000 points, right, you may be dialed back down to 19,000, everybody will go for the search. But history has shown you that the market will rebound and go over 26,000 in the long run. The long run play is for the long-term people. Short-term is exactly what it means. Short-term. So, um, I can't remember who said this, but I know it's always said, hey, buy when there's blood in the street. Blood in the street. Ask yourself. That's on P500. People are saying, oh, these tariffs talk and trade talk and all of the good stuff is falling in the market to dive. And if that is true, if the market is diving because of trade talk, not anything that has happened, then what's going to happen when they start to do positive trade talk? The market will rebound. But still, I haven't seen anything that has economically happened. People are saying, hey, if President Trump takes a uh, tariff on China, China in reverse is going to take a tariff on the United States. If they place a the tariff on the United States via uh, most of our companies like Nike and Apple and you name it, make all this stuff overseas in China, China creates more stuff than it buys. So uh, if they put a tariff on Apple, Apple prices go up, Apple prices start to go up, so if buy less, they may see a hit on their profits. They may have to lay off employees, do all types of goofy stuff, and that may affect the economy. That's what people are looking at with the tariffs and trade talks that they go through. But that's their talk. Exactly what they are talking. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened financially. So when you see, when you see this, uh, you know, when you see this, you have to uh, ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, okay, when others are money, when other people are greedy, or when other people are fearful, you know, when people get fearful, they start to sell, that's when you become greedy. Because ask yourself, what is that to a company like Microsoft? Why has it dipped down? Why has something like Berkshire Hathaway? Why all these companies have dipped down just daily just because of trade talk? Nothing has happened financially to uh, Berkshire. Nothing has happened financially to Microsoft. So why would you sell? This takes me back to a life lesson that I learned with myself. It's that I made and that I went back and analyzed. When you invest, investing into ideas instead of companies. What are ideas? Everybody got a good idea. 
man, I'm looking for investors and all I need is for ten thousand dollars, fifteen, twenty, fifty thousand dollars. I'm just trying to leave one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. As soon as I get this hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I'm gonna be able to get this loan. When I get this loan, everything is gonna be happy ever after, right? And, you know, when I get it, this is my plan, this is XYZ. But that's not really a company that's more so of an idea. I haven't seen a company lay ground yet. So am I going to invest in a company A that's trying to raise money so they can potentially execute a plan? Or what I do with a company B who's already at it's a great company, but it's hit hard down. Company B is proven. Company B is actually a company. Company A or Project A, I would like to say, hasn't done anything yet. It sounds good. It sounds great. It sounds like everything is in line. But it's like everything else. Everybody is Superman and says money is changing hands. So with that being said, with everybody acting like, oh, all I need is this, and this is the greatest idea in the world, and da 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 And as soon as they secure the money from the investors, that's when they run into, oh, wow, I didn't know I need these lights. I didn't know um, I don't have enough traffic, so I actually need more money. Or oh, I didn't know I need these licenses. Um, the SBA is not going to give me the loan. I have to do this. So all this regulation, and I can't get the land from over here. I can't get this XYZ. So people start to do what? They start to figure out, oh, man, I, I, this can't happen. And then the investors end up taking a loss. And they're taking a loss because you made an investment based off of what was projected, not what has happened. Now, when I look at company B, let's say this company is already established, it's showing you it can make money, it may be being on the downturn, maybe it's taking a huge dive recently, or whatever the case may be, but it's a proven concept. It has happened. I can better make analytics off the things that have happened. So, um, that's what took me off of the old venture capital world from looking at the shows like uh, something digital on Netflix. So oh, while is that, how does that relate to what you're saying, for instance? Right now, when I look at it, nothing financially has happened that caused all these great companies to take a dive. All of this just people just being fearful. You know, everybody's waiting on the next market trial. Everybody's waiting on you know, we've been at the longest running pool ever. You know. And we've been at the longest running pool ever, you know, you know, uh we've been at the longest running pool that we've ever seen. And people are becoming very, very surprised by that. And people, everybody is waiting on a reason for this to fall, uh, fall through. So every time we see a slide in the market, every time we see it, everybody's like, oh, well, here's the recession. Here comes the recession. Here comes gold. Gold and bonds are going to go up. Here comes the recession. You know. And uh, that's why I started to, uh, um, that's why I, and looking for these great opportunities, and these are opportunities that every investor dreams of. So the next recession is your chance, and the next downturn is your chance to become rich. Take advantage of other people's fear. Be fearful, uh, be greedy when others are fearful, fearful, but be fearful when others are greedy. When the market is taking downturns, what does that mean? People are fearful. People are selling things. People are running for the border. Some people are running for gold. Some people are running for bonds. But that's your time to go in and see companies like Bank of America, companies like McDonald's, companies, just solid companies that nothing has happened to. And look how it happens. So that's something I want you guys and girls to think of. So um, that's, that's going to be my topic for today. I want to keep the short as brief. I came on late today. Uh, I used to have uh, you know more time, but I don't have a lot of time today. I want to keep the short as brief. Be fearful with when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. Fearful. I want you to leave that on your mind. Five is flooded street. Flooded street meaning that you see red all over the place. We look at great companies that are now for sale. We look at each for sale time, each current time as the market goes down and watch the long term winners win. Because he's the greatest investor of all time. He made the most money off the stock market. Warren Buffett. And guess what? He's a long term investor, right? So I'm looking long term. So anyway, um, that's going to be this week's episode. Guys and girls, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And to the next video podcast, cartoon, a show, a book, or whatever, peace, be safe, I'm out, and some.